Hi, I'm Kevin Dorma. Welcome to part two of my series on the waterside dynamics of an OTSG. In this section, we will review the necessary theory for describing how an OTSG operates. The theory begins with an understanding of how the pass flow of Venturi is used to measure the steam quality. Then we will look at the physics that determine how the waterside behaves in the OTSG tubes. We will finish part two with a walkthrough of an OTSG light off to demonstrate these principles. Steam quality measurement with a Venturi is important because it provides continuous feedback to adjust the firing rate to hold the steam quality at the desired set point. But how does it work? Let's start with a standard Venturi that is used to measure a flow rate. We measure the pressure drop across the Venturi, we know the fluid density, and we are given the meter constant for the Venturi. Then we use the Venturi equation and we determine the flow rate. But with the OTSG, we have an accurate measurement of the water flow rate into the tube, and we know the Venturi pressure drop. So we flip the Venturi equation around and we get an expression for the density of the outlet fluid. Then we can go to the steam tables and find the steam quality that matches this density. However, if the mass flow rate out of the pass is not equal to the mass flow rate into the pass, this inferred measurement will read false and give us the wrong density and hence the wrong steam quality. There are several different correlations that are typically used to infer steam quality, but they all have the same general form as the simple one shown here. Now for some basic physics. First, an OTSG is more like a heated pipeline than a drum boiler. Water flows through the tubes. And as water flows through the tubes, heat is picked up from the fireside. As heat is picked up, the water expands a tiny bit. And then at some point, the water is hot enough to boil and expands a lot. This forms a relatively simple description of the flow based on the conservation of mass conservation of energy, and the relationship between the enthalpy and the specific volume of fluid. This graph will demonstrate how the enthalpy of a lump of water changes as it makes the trip through the OTSG. On the bottom axis is the volume traveled through the OTSG. There's typically 20 cubic meters of volume in an OTSG with 10 cubic meters in the convection section and another 10 in the radiant section. On the vertical axis is the enthalpy or the heat content of the material. The fluid enters the OTSG at 600 kilojoules per kilo or about 150 degrees Celsius. As the fluid creeps through the convection section, it picks up heat from the hot flue gas and the water gets warmer. In this region, the water expands only a small amount with the added heat. The fluid reaches the boiling point near the outlet of the convection section. At this point, the water boils and starts to form steam. Now the volume of the lump of water increases much more as heat is added. The fluid accelerates as it travels through the radiant section and exits the radiant section relatively quickly and leaves the OTSG at the maximum velocity and enthalpy. The enthalpy at the outlet of the OTSG is directly related to the steam quality. The slope of this line is equal to the heat input divided by the water mass flow rate. In this example, the heat input is uniform along the entire path. In most OTSGs, there is one part of the convection section that has a much higher heat input than the rest of the OTSG, but uniform heat input is a convenient simplification. The water-filled volume is that which is upstream of the boiling location. The volume downstream of the boiling location contains mostly steam. We are interested in what happens when the operating conditions change. These conditions are a change in firing rate, a change in water flow rate, or a change in feed water temperature. If the firing rate increases, then there is more heat added through the OTSG volume, and the OTSG produces higher enthalpy and higher quality steam. This makes sense. This is represented on our graph as the line having a steeper slope. Along with the OTSG producing steam with the higher enthalpy and quality, the volume of water held in the OTSG also decreases. Water must be kicked out of the OTSG during this transition, 
which means the Venturi steam quality will read false. Part three will demonstrate how this plays out. Another operating change is to have an increase in the boiler feed water temperature. In this case, the water enters at a higher enthalpy. So for the same firing rate, the steam exits at a higher enthalpy and quality. This also results in a decreased water volume in the OTSG and the Venturi steam quality will also read false. Part four will demonstrate how this transition plays out. Now, let's apply these concepts to a walkthrough of OTSG light off. The graph on the right illustrates how the enthalpy changes through the OTSG during light off. My assistant and I will demonstrate how the water volume changes during the light off process. We each represent one ton of water that enters the OTSG. And being liquid water, we are close together. Before light off, with no heat, we both take one step over. This represents the motion of a lump of water down the unfired OTSG. Then we light the OTSG and heat is added uniformly along the entire length of the tubes. Now the marching orders have changed and we each take one step over and one step up. Since we are still liquid water, we stay close together. This process continues over time. At each step, one ton of water enters the OTSG and one ton exits. We see on the graph to the left that the outlet enthalpy is rising continuously over time. This is the constant rise in temperature that is seen at the outlet of the OTSG during light off. After several minutes, my assistant and I are both a hair away from the boiling temperature. There's 10 cubic meters of water in the radiant section that is nearly at the boiling point. Now, when we take one more step over and one step up, we need to increase in volume to represent the steam that is made. And I increase in volume, and a large mass of water is pushed out of the OTSG. This expansion removes the large mass of water from the radiance section in a very short period of time. Steady state is reached very quickly after this event. That's it for the theory for the water side behavior of an OTSG. The first key point is that the outlet venturi only measures the pressure drop and infers the steam quality from the measured inlet water flow rate. Any change in the water holdup in the OTSG will cause the steam quality venturi to read false. The second key point is that any operating change that affects the outlet steam quality such as a change in the firing rate or the water flow rate or the feed water temperature will also change the volume of water that is held in the OTSG. In parts three and four, we will look at simulation results to visualize how the water side responds to typical changes in OTSG operation. I'm Kevin Dorma. Please visit my webpage at www.kevindorma.ca for more information. Bye for now.